Hello and welcome to the training session. My name is Ashraf Ayad and I'll be working with you today in one of the mental ray production shaders which is called the MIP ray switch. So let's get started. We have a simple scene here that we have a couple of spheres. One is glass and the other one is chrome. And you can see on the chrome glass the reflection of that glass sphere. And we have a simple illumination with an IBL node and that has an HDRI file. A simple setup. The objective again is that we're gonna change that reflection or change the type of rays that the nearby objects will be receiving from a certain shader. So we're going to go to our hypershade, the mentor ray node, and we have two nodes here, one of the MIP ray switch and MIP ray switch advanced. And if we examine both shaders, you will have almost similar attributes that you have in both. The only exception that you will have for an MIP ray switch advanced is that you can see the connection is different. It can take shaders, rather the MIP ray switch can take textures. So for this exercise we're going to be using the MIP ray advanced. Delete this note. And the way we're going to be using this, we're going to for example look at the sphere here, which is the one that has the glass on it. I know it's this one. So if we were to change the type of reflection that this material has, I'm just going to assign the MIP ray switch to the surface I want to manipulate. And now we have different parameters that we work with. So if I do to render this as is without touching anything, let's keep this image for future comparison, it will come out black because it doesn't know what to do. We, ha we have not defined any shader in these parameters. So if I would put the MIA material back into the eye, which is whatever the camera sees, and we render again, we started to see the shaders, but we are already lost some of the parameters of that shader. For example, it would be the reflection, because it's reflecting black, there's no refraction. So if I go back and assign the reflection, refraction, and transparent, render again, now you'll see it acting as it was before. So let's break these connections. And now the objective is that we want to alter the behavior of the rays that's coming out or bouncing out of that shader. So the easiest way I can show it to you is I will change this reflection. So you see here that the chrome ball is reflecting the glass. But I can change that by putting, for example, a blend shader and the reflection. So now rather than reflecting glass material, I want it to reflect a shader attribute, which is the red. Of course, I don't have anything in the refraction, so... And here we go. So we have that shader acting as a glass, but reflecting something else, which is the blind shader. So let me break this connection. Put the Mia back. Quick render again. So let's see what we can do with the final gather attributes. To illustrate the final gather effect, what I've done is disabled the background IBL or the environment IBL and I put a plate which has a surface shader white and I made sure there is no illumination coming from the default light by Maya. So only, the only illumination we have is just that plate and you can see it has a nice reflection here and it's illuminating as a white luminance here. So what we can do is the same thing. We can actually change that behavior of the final gather. So I switched to the MIP ray switch advanced, now it's assigned here. And as a matter of fact, we can do a quick test render. And this should come black because we didn't put anything in the eye. All right, as expected. So we will place my surface shader to see the eye. And what I want to change is rather than having a white illumination, I'm going to put red. So we put it in the final gather. If I render this again, you will see how the white plate still holds, but the illumination itself as if it was a red plate. So again, you're altering the behavior of the rays that is emitting from that surface. And the reason we don't have reflection because I didn't plug anything in the reflection. So for example, if I wanted to stay uh, red, I will plug the red surface shader and we should have a red reflection in that chrome sphere. All right. So let's go back to my original scene. For the refraction, it will be pretty much the same principle. I'm using the same scene again. And I'm just going to assign 
the MIP ray switch. And for the eye, I'm going to place the regular glass. I have another shader that is giving me as well glass material, but this time I'm going to put it in the refraction. And if I'm going to examine this, you will see the refraction has a different color and different glossiness. So if I to render, keep this, you will see it respected that new behavior for refraction. However, since I didn't put any reflection, the reflection was ignored. All right, so for now, let's put uh, some photons in the light and emit some caustics. So in this example, we have a spotlight that's emitting photons. And of course, in order to receive the photons for the caustics, we have to enable the caustics and the render settings. And I enabled the map visualizer so I can see the caustics and their color. And you can see here they are reflecting the shader color with somewhat blue. So keeping this image for future comparison. And what are we going to do now? If we going to use, uh, actually let me render it one more time so you can see how fast it will render. Very fast, almost two seconds. If I was to do the previous workflow and I go, especially when we come to uh, photons, and I say assign MIP ray switch advanced, and without even doing anything, and I try to render, you start to see this nice warning, which is they cannot store the photons because it's hitting a shader that doesn't know what to do with it. And it's going to take forever to render, so I'm just going to disable the render. And the reason that's happening, if you examine the actual shader here in the SG node itself, you will see the photon slot is empty. So you want to make sure that you plug that in there. So we have it assigned to the material shader and the photon shader. Now if I render this, it still doesn't hit anything because we didn't really identify it in the shader itself. The slots are empty. So I can go back here and assign my eyes for the glass material blue. Reflection, same thing, same thing. As for the photons, I'm going to put that red shader. Now let's render that. See, very fast. And we have that red photons. And I mistakenly put refraction for material 3, so I'm going to flip that to material 2. So here you go. The blue glass is causing red photons to be bounced around. And this is because we did the ray switch advanced.